previously on East Charmer. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and for today's video, it's gonna be another a day in life working in IT. So in this video today, I will show you how we are deploying our switches, what you will need and I will show you what our config file looks like. In the previous videos, I showed you in detail how we configure the switch but now I'm gonna show you what the config file looks like and what configuration we add in the switches. So if you're interested in this video, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so just want to show you the station where we stage and prep our equipment. We got like two stack switches in here. I also have a video of configuring stack switches if you want to check that out. The Cisco model that we are using for our switches is the Cisco Catalyst 9300, 48 ports that is stackable to up to eight switches max. So we have finished configuring these stack switches and we are gonna rack them later. So we are just gonna power them off before racking and start moving it to our data centers. Okay, so I'm gonna power this down so I can move it to our data center where we are gonna rack it. But before you power it down, just make sure that you have saved your configurations first. I did that just now and typically unplug these. There's really no power buttons here or like a power off shutdown command like that. So I think yeah, it's pretty safe to just plug, unplug it. I'm also removing this SFP that is Ethernet. We're not gonna need that. We would need the uh, we would need the other SFP, which is fiber. So taking this. Also, as you can see, because this is a stacked switch, we do have a blanked unit in here because this is just gonna be a member of this master switch. So that's how we usually do the stack switches. They don't need like another like network module or ports. Okay, so now it's time to show you the configuration file that we used at work for the switches that we have set up. Okay, so before we get started, just a disclaimer first before you guys come in after me in the comment section that I didn't come up with this switch configuration file. My team didn't come up with this. We have another separate network engineer that have been planning and creating all of the configuration files we in it just implement what they have created and also we report issues and we troubleshoot issues if that happens so we didn't come up with the commands that were used in the configuration file and before even deploying the configuration files we made sure that this were all tested first Okay, so the first command in the config file is this VTP mode transparent, which just sets the VTP to transparent. And this is allowing the relay of the VTP protocols to be able to be received from one trunk port to all the trunk ports. Next is we are setting up the host name of the switch. And this is where we put our switch name so usually we have like a naming convention when naming a switch for ours it's the company name the floor and the rack letter or number and the actual switch name and then we are just setting up the domain name the ip domain name for your company key next is to generate ssh keys ssh is to secure our re remote access to the switches and this is the modulus that we are using and we are setting it to ssh version 2. next of course we are setting up the ip address for the actual switch just to take note that i am not showing our actual ip address so this is just like an example and the dummy IP address, of course. So this is the IP address and the subnet mask. Okay, so we just have disabled a lot of uh, IP commands in here. And then for the next commands, this is to set up the NTP server for our switches. The NTP server is used to synchronize our clocks, make sure that they're always correct in time. Next is setting up the name server. So this is for the domain name which translates uh, host names to IP address. Okay, next is 
the banner so this is what you usually see when you log into a switch it's just a security warning usually that if there's an authorized access they will be sub subject to legal action so this is usually like a standard for every switch this is very important Okay, so the next command is to disable all the web management services in our switches to also prevent security risk because we prefer like SSH and SNMP to access the devices and not really with like a remote web service. So this is SSH is more secure and we can control it better than HTTPS. I think it's more of like a security practice. Okay, so this is now for configuring the log messages. This is for the system logging. And there are different ways to handle different levels for the messages. I think there are maybe seven or eight levels. And we are just using informational in here. Okay, so the next command is to configure VTY. So this is for like remote access and management for our switch. Okay, so the next command is to disable showing the logs in an active session. Console logs are those messages that you see once you have entered the command. So this gets really annoying and can screw up your typing when you're typing commands. And sometimes this just appears when like the interface is up and all. So we do this, we disable this so that we can also prevent high CPU utilization. And most of the time it's just because it's inconvenient and it's really annoying when you're typing commands okay so the next is the command for global parameters and this is just for enabling spanning tree in here we are disabling this for the http and also enabling lldp this is setting up the snmp server location so this is just like your company location and where the switch is physically located like the floor and rack number and also the serial I, uh, the serial number for the switch okay also we have like commands for access list this is just enabling access list what we are permitting and what we're not permitting so i'm not gonna go through all of this this usually is like a long list so there is our access list okay so next commands are for setting up configuring tacx so tacx is developed by cisco and it's using the triple a which is enabling us to secure our remote management and access to the network switch. So once this command runs, we will now be able to access our switches with our like domain username, the same username that we are using to log into different systems. So at least in here, we don't have to use the local like, like the local username and password that we use for Cisco. We can use our domain username and credentials to make it more secure and now we have the commands for interface configuration and we are adding like the different vlans that we're going to use for the switch this is just like setting up vlans and their descriptions in here okay so this is now the commands to configure the core router port so we have like a port that we configure to be the trunk port in here so this is for this interface okay so lastly for our configuration file we are just configuring all of the access ports and that's like almost all the ports in the 48 port switch so we are just doing a range to make it easier to configure all of them at the same time and then just and put them on the respective vlan that it should have and set it up as access port and just disable the snmp and logging event and enable spanning tree port fast so that's how we configure our access ports